The current crisis has affected retail businesses in massive and unexpected ways. The industry I love has been impacted, with comic book publishers and the main distributor, Diamond, taking large hiatuses. Even with new material, local comic book stores are dealing with state and county regulations. I decided to reach out to stores across the country to see how they're dealing with things and how they plan to move forward. Today I'm speaking with Steve, the owner of Third Eye Comics, a chain of stores in Maryland. That state has only recently started lifting restrictions. So let's see how Steve's stores are doing with the challenges facing us all. So Steve, I appreciate you uh, joining me today. Um, maybe first you could explain to the viewers a little bit about who you are, why you decided that you want to work in comic book retail, and, and what your store tends to focus on, or what makes uh, Third Eye unique. Yeah, totally. Um, so my name is Steve Anderson. I'm the owner of Third Eye Comics. Uh, we are a regional chain of comic book stores, you know, comic book and gaming stores uh, in the uh, DC, Maryland, Virginia area. We have um, our flagship location in Annapolis, Maryland. It's a 7,500 square foot superstore of comic books, toys, and everything in between. And then right next door to it, we have Third Eye Games, which is also a 7,500 square foot superstore of games, toys, and everything in between. And then we have locations in Lexington Park, Maryland, uh, and we have locations in Richmond, Virginia, and that's Third Eye Comics uh, Lexington Park and Third Eye Comics Richmond, Virginia. When did you, uh, when did you open? Uh, 2008. We, uh, we opened uh, in May of 2008. Um, so we're no stranger to the world going crazy. Uh, when we do <laughs> at third eye, we opened right after the financial crisis. Um, right, right. They told me that was a terrible, terrible time to open, but you know, it was a good time to learn how to run a business. That makes a lot of sense. Um, I guess my first question is, you know, how has your store been doing since, the pandemic hit. Um, you know, not all of us are familiar with how Maryland is is handling this and how the comic book industry there on the East Coast is doing. Yeah, so I mean, it's um, it's crazy. Um, I'm I'm kind of a nut about this kind of stuff. Um, so like back in January, I was following the news about what was going on in uh, Wuhan, and um, I um, I just I was like, I didn't I didn't have any idea how bad it was going to be. I mean, I don't think anybody did. Um, I, but I, I was like, oh, this could be a thing. So we've always been very um, big champions of keeping a clean store at Third Eye. Um, our stores are spotless and we're already very, very, we've always been very strict about sanitary processes, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so we've always had like hand sanitizer at the cash wraps and, you know, wipes and things like that. And I decided, you know, in January, I was like, well, let's ramp that up, you know, thinking this would be like a really bad case of the flu, which it obviously was not. Um, <laughs> and um, by the time February got here, I started getting more nervous as I started seeing more news come out about it. It still hadn't hit the country yet. And um, we ramped up, you know, like public hand sanitizer stations and, um, you know, things that we could do to make the store more safe. Um, still not any anywhere in my mind I think that we would have to shut down our store then March hit, and uh that was I think March was right after it really started to kind of get scary over here and that was when we stuff with Italy and, and all that kind of stuff and um and that was when we basically we were like okay we need to prepare and um and yeah we've been we made it through. Um, we had to do, we did curbside until we couldn't do that anymore. Um, state made that a no go, which totally understandable. We get it. Uh, and then we did home delivery, which they let us do all the way through the whole shutdown, which we were shut down from March 23rd until, uh, this Monday is actually our official reopening. Um, okay. we're kind of in a gray area where basically state of Maryland opened up non-essential retailer on the 15th of May, our county decided to stay closed, but we're technically in a municipality. So our city decided that we could have one, you know, one or two families in at a time. Um, so we've been basically limiting uh, our traffic. So this Monday, June 1st, is what I consider to be our official open date. Yeah. Uh, because it'll be more in line with the rest of the state. But yeah, we did um, curbside, we did delivery, we did mail order, um, and it was hard, but we're very lucky. Comic book fans are very, very much supportive of their shops and our people were supporting the heck out of us through all of this. Well, that, that, that's interesting that you say that. And, and, and I'm curious about that a little more. Um, 
so that's that's about two and a half months. It sounds like roughly that that you were yes. sort of uh, shut down as like you know being able to allow customers to come in and stuff. So. Were there any areas that were um, either new or existing that you decided to focus your efforts on to sort of keep business uh, moving? And, and how, how did it work out? Like what worked best? Yeah, I mean, so we, um, we typically, when we're trying to do like a new thing at Third Eye, we, we spend three to six months just planning it out, testing it out, you know, trying to make sure it works. And that was out the window with this. Uh, so we literally like, you know, we're creating new ways of doing business over the span of two to three days, which is insanely stressful. But um, we did learn a lot of neat new tricks and some of it we plan to keep with us. Uh, home delivery was surprisingly popular. Um, okay. We have a great, awesome van that's painted to look like a, best way I can describe it, it's like a third eye fighter jet. It's got like our logo's face on the front and it's just, when it comes through your neighborhood, like, you know, it's like, that's something special. It's something neat. So people um, would take pictures of the van and like put it on their social media and tag us. And we kind of did contests around that. And uh, we had a t-shirt that we had done up that like everybody who ordered every week, we would do like a raffle and like basically pick one winner a week who would get like the t-shirt and the t-shirt was like a rat fink style third eye guy driving yeah. the van. Um, and, uh, delivery did great. Uh, mail order. We, uh, we lowered our shipping cost to a flat five or $5 shipping. Um, and, uh, you know, that, that made people, you know, very much like, you know, they're ordering from us. Um, we did uh virtual shopping through zoom. We're basically like, you know, people could schedule appointments for us to take the zoom app and our staff would basically walk them through our store and show them books, answer questions, make recommendations, um, that sounds brilliant. That, yeah, that worked really well. I mean, because the, the thing about our stores and the thing that was kind of heartbreaking about this whole process is we are a brick and mortar first comic book store. We've always done some mail order, but it's never been like our strong suit. Now, after this is done, we'll probably do a lot more just because we've gotten better at it. And we've picked up a lot of customers, but brick and mortar is where we've always, you know, really been focused. It's what we enjoy doing and to not be able to let people in and browse and, and kind of interact with them and make recommendations. We know that that was just as heartbreaking for our customers as it was for us. So the zoom shopping kind of solved that. Yeah. Well, I'll just insert here. Um, I lived in, uh, uh Northern Virginia, just outside DC, um, th from, uh, 2003 to the end of 2013. Oh, cool. Okay, right on. So I've been to your store. Oh, cool. Okay, um, right on. You guys I always did a great right job on, on things. It looked a little familiar. So I was like, I was like, I think I recognize him. I didn't know. I you mean, did. Annapolis was Annapolis was a bit of a drive, so I was Absolutely. never a regular. Yeah. But I have been to your store because cool, yeah. Third Eye is a very nice chain, <laughs> and um, you guys always had an immaculate large space, uh, Thank you. diverse selection. I remember you did a, a lot of fun stuff on Free Comic Book Day. You yeah, did yeah. An event out of that, and and you were good with branding too, your logo and stuff like that. Thank you. Very, very recognizable. <laughs> But it is interesting to hear about these new aspects that, you, that you're getting into because I, I am sort of learning that a lot of comic book stores are trying to look into like ways to diversify their risk in terms of what they carry, but also in terms of how they reach their customer instead of purely relying on them coming into the store, right? trying different things with maybe social media. You, I love your idea that you, you would use a Zoom app to guide a customer through a store to give them a little bit of that experience that we all love so much. Yep. Um, I, now that we've gone through something that no one could have really predicted or planned for, even if we, we knew it was coming, you know, it, but it, is there anything that we can take away from this, Steve, like anything that you've learned in terms of a way you'd ever try to do anything differently or, or you wish that anything would be done differently? Or do you think that it was handled as well as could be expected? Yeah, that's a really good question. Uh, really good question. I know it's broad, but yeah, just curious no, that, what, what kind of lessons we may have learned from any of this. Yeah. Um, you know, for me, um, I mean, like, there's definitely things that I learned that I can bring into post shutdown life. You know what I mean? Like, I, I think that delivery and curbside and all those things, while they're not ideal methods for what we do primarily, I think this showed me that they are valid things that might be you know, people, it's going to be something we're going to keep, you know what I mean? And we're probably going to keep it even if there, even after there's a vaccine, even after people feel comfortable, we'll probably still keep the options because, you know, it did show me that there was, there was that. Um, 
in terms of preparing for something like this, I, I don't, I don't, I don't think so. I don't, I don't, cause like it's so unknown. Let me hone in on, on one aspect of it then. Uh, early on, uh, yeah. Diamond Distribution made a decision. I think it makes sense that they were going to stop distributing comics. I mean, it made sense in terms of protecting their employees. Of Diamond course. is not quite a monopoly, but almost the, the you know, it, it carries all the main comics for, for you as a comic book shop. Did that help you with them deciding to, to pause things? Absolutely. Absolutely. That was actually, um, so that, that removed a gigantic stressor uh, from us at Third Eye, and I'm sure for a lot of shops, because the way that comic books work and the way that most comic shops work is um, you very much, you know, you follow, you know, your cash flow. Now, we, we definitely try to plan ahead for disasters, and that helped us with this, but the reality is, is that your diamond bill is usually going to be pretty reflective as a percentage of what your normal weekly sales are. And those orders are put in three to six weeks in advance at the latest. So sometimes two months out, sometimes three to six weeks. So you don't really have a lot of room to cut when you all of a sudden, you, you don't know you're going to be shut down in three days. So not having a diamond bill with that diamond shipment to worry about for the two months that we were shut down, that was... That was great. Now, admittedly, we did get product from other distributors, um, like uh, Ingram Books was one, okay. um, you know, for things like, you know, Batman, The Last Night on Earth and stuff like that, because, you know, we wanted to have something, but it was kind of on our terms. It was like ordering a restock, whereas, mm -hmm. you know, if it was weekly new comics, Last Night on Earth is one thing you know you're going to sell and you can target, you know what I mean? But you might not sell, you know, Teen Titans number 32 or whatever, like you would normally if your business is shut down. So them stopping was, I think that that was done as much for the health of their employees as it was done for the health of the entire industry. I mean, I think that, that it was a good yeah. thing. Yeah. I think at first um, a lot of readers were sort of um, cautious or, or even critical about the idea just yeah. because, you know, sometimes Diamond is the only game in town and, and that makes people like sometimes a little nervous, but it seems like their move did help keep comic book shops afloat for, for to, to some degree there. Were you working with any other distributors? I mean, I know that there were a few other distributors that were sort of open for business, but from my understanding anyway, most of them were more like um, sort of the wholesale sort of yeah. comic distributors so i'm not sure if there's any conflicts of interest or if how well that worked if you um, work with them so there was two sub distributors uh, uh lunar and uh ucs and uh they were distributing dc comics okay uh, and um and we did use ucs um because for me like number one it was it was a very minimal amount of product that was going to be coming through those distributors and number two, we did have customers who wanted to get books and we mm. wanted to do whatever we could to help serve our customers throughout the entire thing. Now, when things kind of, I don't want to say got back to normal because we're still kind of getting back to normal, but when Taking things steps in that direction, exactly. When we knew diamond would start shipping again, we did switch back to diamond because it just makes sense for me to consolidate through them. And they have a great track record with me in terms of like, like I, they've always done right by us in terms of like, you know, fulfillment and shipping and you know, the discount structure and all that. So, I mean, it made sense to switch back. Now that doesn't mean I think that the other distributors are a bad idea. I mm -hmm. just didn't see any, any reason to continue to use them once my, my primary distributor came back online. Sure. So you're saying um, Monday, I think that you're the, the first sort of store that I've, I've been able to hear that's, that's allowed to open their doors to the public. Uh, oh, is cool. anything going to be different for, for customers when you uh, open your doors officially? Yeah, yeah. So we, we worked on a lot of things. Um, so different, but the same. That's kind of how I'm saying it. Um, we have a lot of safety precautions that we put in place, um, but we've done it in a way that should not change the in-store experience significantly. The major change is going to be the, uh, there is a requirement to, in our state uh, to wear a mask when you go into a store. Uh, and we're fine with that. You know, if it means I can open my store and, you know, I can be in business, 
totally. And we, we actually, you know, we have disposable masks on hand. So if somebody forgets their mask, wow. we can give them one. Um, we had third eye custom masks printed with our smiley face thing on it. And that's what our staff wears, but we also sell those if somebody wants to get one of those. Um, and then we, uh, we installed today actually uh, sneeze guards at our cash wraps for both stores. Um, so we have these with, you know, areas to kind of put your hands underneath and all that. So that way uh, where the cashiers are stationary when they're ringing, there's less of a risk if somebody, you know, coughs or sneezes yeah. even without them, even with the mask, there's less of a risk of that hitting that. So it's just another layer to kind of keep things safe. Um, we are getting UVC lighting installed in our HVAC uh, systems at both stores, um, which um, it's what they use in hospitals. Um, and it, it, it's something that runs basically out of sight and it just kind of helps sterilize the air. Um, you know, it kills viruses, kills molds. I don't know if it's something that would really make a difference in the prevention here, but I figured why not? You know what I mean? That's great. Um, we, uh, you know, of course we had the public hand sanitizer stations installed before this all went down. So we have those. Um, we switched everything over in our restrooms to touchless. So touchless paper towel dispensers, touchless soap sensors. Um, trying to think of what else. Ah, oh, floor decals for making sure people keep great distance. So we, we've done a lot of prep to make sure that the store is still the same store. It's still shoppable, but it's, it's, it's extra safe to make sure that like there's that risk of like, you know, getting a cough or getting, you know, a sneeze your way is, is minimized. Brilliant. Brilliant. No, that sounds wonderful. I mean, I think that like, hopefully, hopefully uh, that means that people feel uh, safer uh, shopping there and, and things cool. can get back a little closer to, to uh, normal or whatever the new normal is. Right. When you were sort of shut down and you were doing things like um, home delivery, curbside pickup, stuff like that. Any idea on like how, how, how much um, like percentage wise your sort of um, regular customers were, were utilizing that stuff? Like did, 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 did you figure any sort of statistics on, you know, just how, how, how much you were being supported by your regulars? We, um, so we, we did, we did keep data. Um, we haven't actually had time to sit down and really analyze it, but my gut instinct just through like our social media and our, our connections with people and stuff like that, it was probably about 80, 70 to 80% of our, our regulars. But what was really neat was we saw a lot of people, um, who, you know, sometimes a lot of them probably people like yourself who live a little bit further out from us that might come out and, you know, see us once, you know, every, you know, couple months as a special trip, they really came out and drove. So it wasn't just our regulars that we see every week, but it was like people that like might come see us once every couple months. They were like, Oh no, this cool place is going to, you know, might go away. What can I do to help? And we just, you know, like, yeah, let's do orders. So we delivered, um, we delivered as far out as Alexandria, um, and as far as York PA, so we were, we were going all over the place and, um, the mail orders were even crazier and we actually picked up some new customers too. Um, because there was people who, you know, they wanted entertainment and a lot of the big box stores like your Barnes and Nobles and things like that. Um, I, I don't think that they were as close enough to the ground to be able to mobilize on some of these like unconventional ways of getting stuff to people. And, um, I'm sorry, did you say that you were providing entertainment through through some, like a well, channel or something like, like that? Like them buying the books or like we did Facebook live shows where they could, okay. they could interact and things like that. But just the fact that like people were bored and they needed stuff to do. And I think that like, because like, I mean, I, I you know, it's it's like, I can't remember what I had to get something. This is this is really silly and it funny, but I had to get some shelves from Ikea because we were rearranging something at the store. And, uh, and that's, that's, that's a big secret. We use Billy's for like all of our trade bookcases. You know what I mean? Like, like they're the best. You got one too. They're the best. They're the best. They're, they are the best for graphic novels. And, um, I needed some Billy's and, um, and I went to Ikea to do the, the curbside and, um, and I felt, I felt bad because it felt like it was like, it was so new, you know? So it was so confusing. And I think when you have these bigger companies it's a little harder to kind of take an idea and like be like this is what we're doing this is how we do it this is sure. what we do whereas for us you know we only have to communicate that to like you know under 15 people you know what i mean big company they got to communicate that to thousands of people and i feel like that makes it a little harder so i think that that for us we had a lot of people who were like 
I don't know how to get a graphic novel from Barnes and Noble. I'm going to get it. You know, this, what's this com crazy comic shop doing? And there you go. Well, that's great. That's great. It was really interesting to, to, to hear how you handled it. I mean, I'm, I'm really happy for you that your Thank store you. is stores are about to uh, open back up. I hope Thank that you. things are safe and, and, and functional. Anything else that. you can think of oh, that, that, that you learned through the whole experience that we haven't addressed? Um, you know, honestly, just, just, I just learned, you know, I mean, I, I always try to be grateful because I feel like I have the coolest job in the world and I love what I do every day, but this really, really ramped up the gratitude. And, um, and it just taught me, you know, always be grateful and keep your stress levels low. And I think I'm going to try and drop some pounds and get a little healthier in the post COVID world because, you know, yeah. I just, I, I, I was, you know, I was, be, I be, became more conscious of, of a lot of those things. Yeah. It, it really is an amazing community though. It really is. Like even when people, you know, either like this thing way more than that thing, uh, we all share a passion for the medium itself. And right. uh, for, for me, I think it's just the most dynamic, versatile medium. I, I just absolutely love comics and it's, it's always exciting to talk to somebody else that's uh, as passionate. So I really appreciate you. your time today. Thank you. I appreciate you, Chris.